Around 4.5 billion years ago, a molten earth began to cool. Violent collisions with comets and asteroids brought the fluid of life, water. Then it gradually accumulated to form the body of water that composes much of our planet's hydrosphere, the ocean. Long ago, the deepest reaches of the ocean were once thought to be devoid of life, but now it's slowly becoming one. The ocean is a continuous body of salt water that covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Oceans, for centuries, people have regarded them as an inexhaustible supply of food, a useful transport route, and a convenient dumping ground, simply too vast to be affected by anything we do. Humans depend on these teeming waters for comfort and survival. But the threat of extinctions, the ever-growing pollution, and the destructions of habitats plague the planet's bodies of water, disrupting important cycles and processes. If this continue, this may be its last great wilderness. Within this aquatic ecosystem are living things that depend on the water for survival, such as fish, plants, and microorganisms. These ecosystems are very fragile and can be easily disturbed by pollution. It also comprise closed natural cycles and are inhabited by highly specialized and adapted organisms. Aquatic ecosystems recycle nutrients, purify water, recharge groundwater, augment and maintain stream flow, and provide habitat for a wide variety of flora and fauna and recreation for people. Clean water is one of the nature's greatest gifts to mankind. These not only appeal aesthetically, but are vital to the very functioning and continuance of life. In many ways, the ocean regulates our climate. It soaks up the heat and transports warm water from the equator to the poles and cold water from the poles to the tropics. Without these currents, the weather would be extreme in some regions and fewer places would be habitable. It regulates rain and droughts, holding 97% of the water of our planet. Almost all rain that drops on land comes from the sea. The ocean absorbs carbon dioxide to keep the carbon cycle and accordingly balance the Earth's temperature. It is our global climate control system. Water ecosystems indeed provide humans with resources through its vast and complex processes, but human activity, particularly over the last few decades, has finally pushed oceans to their limit. What once was the home for thousands of organisms is now a jeopardizing place. With the continuous rise of temperature, drop of oxygen levels, and acidification brought about by human negligence, the risk of extinction is elevating. The complexity of aquatic ecosystems and the linkages within them can make the effect of disturbances on them difficult to predict. These linkages mean that Damage to one component of the ecosystem can lead to impacts on other ecosystem components. All bodies of water are subject to a natural and slow eutrophication process, which in recent decades has undergone a very rapid progression due to the presence of man and his activities. Eutrophication is predominantly caused by human action due to the dependence on using nitrate and phosphate fertilizers. These nutrients come from fertilizers 
used in intensive farming practices on land. In some parts of the world, especially the developing nations, sewage water is directly discharged into the bodies of water, such as rivers, lakes, and oceans. As a result, it introduces high amounts of chemical nutrients, thereby stimulating the dense growth of algal blooms and other aquatic plants which threatens survival of aquatic life in many ways. At first, the overload of nutrients in the body of water encourages plant growth. However, soon this excess of organic material uses up most of the available oxygen in the water. This leaves little oxygen for fish and other aquatic animals, resulting in the suffocation of aquatic life which leads to imbalanced functioning of the system. There are two types of eutrophication, natural and cultural. Natural eutrophication is the process by which ocean gradually age and become more productive. It normally takes thousands of years to progress. However, humans, through their various cultural activities, have greatly accelerated this process in thousands of oceans around the globe. We call this cultural and anthropogenic eutrophication. Additional nutrients in the sea can lead to excessive phytoplankton growth that results in booms. When these large numbers of organisms die, the sharp increase in the composition of the dead organisms by oxygen-using bacteria depletes oxygen levels. This can result in the death by oxygen starvation of large numbers of other organisms such as fish. These other organisms can no longer survive with such depleted oxygen levels and die off, creating what is referred to sometimes as a dead zone, devoid of life. The origin of life is slowly becoming the origin of death. Ocean calmness conceals billions of creatures interacting in ways that we will never fully understand. Much of the ocean is mysterious. We cruise along on boats on the ocean's surface and sit on beaches, ignoring them killed by its taint underneath. Underneath the ocean's taint. 